in order for us to get to where we want to get as a franchise and an organization, there are some stepping stones that we have to take. To say that I'm happy with the season and the wins and loss columns, of course I'm not. I want to win as badly as you guys want to win. Hard work is non-negotiable and that's a key to success in anything that you do. So my goal as a, as a coach and, and my mandate is to make sure that everybody's coming back, they're focused, but they're ready to compete. We think there's seven really good players in this year's draft. And then we think there's some real good depth between eight and 20. So what I'm saying to you is we're gonna get good players. Hi, I'm Gordy Dwyer, the head coach of the Charlottetown Islanders. Hi, I'm Grant Sonia, general manager of the Charlottetown Islanders of the Quebec Major Junior Hockey League. Well, you know what? It was an exciting day for myself at, uh, and my family. Um, I remember it well. It was in Chicoutimi, Quebec. It was many moons ago, but uh, it was an exciting day, um, getting drafted by the Hall Olympics at the time, and uh, you know, just to be able to put on the jersey and the ball cap was, was something special. This will be my second Quebec Major Junior Hockey League draft. Uh, I don't have a number of how many drafts I've been in. Um, obviously worked at the National Hockey League level under some really, really good hockey people. I've learned a lot. Uh, the experience is invaluable. Every year the drafts are a little bit different than the, than the than the following or the previous rather, and uh, you know we're we're excited about this year's draft for sure. Every year is important. Um, the way I, I'll, I'll handicap a draft by saying this: I think in junior hockey, if you can get four kids out of each draft year to play, then then it's considered to be a good draft. Now that's junior hockey. That differs from the NHL. Um, I've heard people suggest that if you get three or four players at an NHL draft to come in and play in your hockey club, you can start a dynasty. But in junior hockey, the window is very short, and you have to have players acquired through your draft that you grow and build yourself. Well, you know, it's, it's a big week for the QMJHL, and uh, it's, we have all our annual meetings. It's an opportunity for, for the organizations and the coaches and the general managers and, uh, to meet and, and, and talk, but, uh, but also from the league's perspective, an opportunity to get everybody under the same roof and, and talk about league, uh, league issues, things that are taking place, uh, rule changes, different things that, that happen throughout, throughout the season. So it's a, it's a big week with lots of meetings and, uh, you know, an opportunity for the organization to get together and, uh, and talk pre-draft as well. You never know. You never know. I think it's uh, it's one of those days that you have to you have to watch, and and you know there's lots of different things that take place, and uh, you know uh, we've seen it in the past where moves can be made at uh, at the last minute, but but for the most part it's uh, it's an exciting day for for all the organizations, everybody involved. So uh, there's usually a few surprises. Here at the 2014 draft in Sherbrooke, Quebec. Big day for the Islanders. A number of trades about to be announced the day before the draft. This being a Friday morning around 9 o'clock, 10 on Atlantic. Delta Sherbrooke. Here we go. Here we go, draft. Here we go, draft. <laughs> Yeah. 
compared to the NHL. What do you think? Well, this is uh, this is what makes it uh, unique. Not all major junior leagues hold a draft like this. Yeah. And it makes it special. Because it's good for everybody. It's good for the teams, the interaction, gets people to know people, uh, you know, other than just their own team. So, um, socially, it's good for the league. Uh, George Matthews, General Manager Grant Sonier here in Sherbrooke, uh, the home of the 2014 Quebec Major Junior Hockey League draft. This is the day before, Grant, before the draft. Um, as well, trades being announced today. As it sits right now, you've got the seventh pick in the draft, but also other first-round picks that are going to be moved here today. Yeah, we, uh, we acquired a lot of assets, as everybody knows, and uh, we've moved those assets to get some really important pieces. We're really excited about adding not only two great players, but two kids that are island kids. Uh, Ross Johnson comes our way, um, uh, along with Ryan McKinnon, and uh, we couldn't be more excited about adding the quality players that they are, but uh, the fact that they're going to add their experience, their, uh, their leadership qualities, is really going to help our young core group uh, of players, and uh, we're really excited. So you've got the seventh pick in the draft uh, as it stands right now, a couple of second rounders as well. Uh, tell us about this draft, what your expectations are. Well, we, we, uh, we did a little exercise. I know the, the, the general consensus is, is that there's no uh, Sidney Crosby's, there's no Nathan McKinnon's in this draft. Uh, there are some really, really high-end players. But what we believe is there's more depth than people are suggesting. So to have all these extra assets that we have, we're, we're going to be doing some maneuvering, some posturing, and uh, we're really excited about the players we think we're going to acquire. We're now going to go into the Islanders' war room. So Grant, can you briefly explain the major function of the war room? War room is an area where when we get uh, all of our scouts get together at the draft, uh, obviously the work is done from the beginning at, uh, of the season when the scouts start. And it's the culmination of all those games and all those game reports put into uh, reports that are put into lists. And the war room is the final step before we get to the draft where we're going to have some serious arguments, some serious debates as, as to whether we want player A versus player B. and and uh, other moves that we might be making to acquire more draft picks. Is it uh, because we like the depth of the draft? So War Room, we call it, just an area for us to get in there and do some battling. The scouts like to battle for the players they like, and uh, that's where you get your best work done. What we're going to do here is we're going to uh, ask each guy just to face the camera, introduce yourself, and say what region you're from. We'll start with Gilles Tremblay, our head scout. I am Gilles Tremblay. I'm from uh, Princeville, Quebec. Jill's an incredibly detailed guy, um, very organized, very schedule oriented, uh, make sure everybody's on their toes, uh, demands a really good report from the players and uh, does an excellent job with our staff. He really, he runs our scouting staff, he makes my life easy. Hi, I'm Marc Paré, I'm from Lévis, Quebec, and I'm scout of Quebec area. Marc Paré is uh, based out of Quebec City. He's a real quiet but serious guy, takes his job very serious. Uh, he was instrumental in Alexander Goulet being drafted. Not the prime area of the Montreal Greater Montreal area where a lot of hockey is being played, but in the Quebec area. Hi, Al Poussin from Montreal and I scout for the uh, Montreal area. Al, very well connected. Uh, his son is uh, Matt Cousin on our, uh, on our depth chart now. Traded for Matt last year from Blainville. His connections are impeccable, knows everybody in the area knows a lot of coaches, knows a lot of the parents, and uh, part of scouting is also acquiring information away from the rink, and he's an excellent source for us. Hi, Brett Riley, Needham, Massachusetts. I'm the American Scout. Brett is the son of Rob Riley, who works for the Columbus Blue Jackets. Uh, met Brett as a young kid, watched him play hockey. He's now into scouting and coaching, and uh, he uh, jumped right in. The transition was, was easy for him because he followed his dad around a lot, uh, knew the rink net system, uh, did a great job for us. We, did, we drafted three Americans. Robert Burke from Moncton, New Brunswick, taking care of New Brunswick. Robert is in our hub city of Moncton, uh, gets to see a lot of the, uh, obviously New Brunswick, but uh, sees PEI a lot, uh, over, overlap, and uh, also gets into Nova Scotia. Moncton's an easy, a, a great place to scout from. Uh, school teacher, principal actually, uh, very dedicated, very hard working scout for us, does a lot of crossover. Trevor Burt, 
uh, Charlottetown, Prince Edward Island. Trevor, we call him House Cat. Uh, I call him Cottage Cat in the summer. Uh, House Cat's his nickname. Uh, really, really detailed oriented guy. Really takes the craft serious. Has done a really good job of doing a lot of background work for us. As, an, as the only island team, obviously, in the Quebec League, it's very, very important that we know our local players uh, better than anybody, really. And uh, we've done a lot of crossover work now with House Cat, and uh, very happy to have him on staff. Does a great job for us. Why do they call him House Cat? No idea. <laughs> Hi, my name is Patrick Desrosiers. I'm a scout from Montreal. Pat, we call him our Mafia scout. He's, uh, he's so connected in the city, uh, always on the go, carries three phones with him. Uh, I don't know if they're always hockey phone calls, but uh, he's got a lot going on. He's uh, an entrepreneur in the Montreal area that does a lot of uh, sourcing out for employees. But uh, he works full time for us. He's a he's a hard, hard working scout that uh, Jules calls upon to do a lot of crossover for us as well. Gets to all the major tournaments. We go through this process, uh, these scouts go out, uh, they're, they're grossly overworked and grossly underpaid. They, their love for our team and for the sport of hockey is immeasurable. We go through all of that process, we rank the players, we, we do our due diligence in, in, in reading and rereading and, and going through the reports and doing background checks and at the end of the day for us to get a, a player that we felt was an elite player in this draft, that makes it all worthwhile. And you're, you're, the building blocks to your hockey club sometimes can come after the first, second, third rounds, but primarily the best players are taken and they're the ones that are going to grow your program vis-a-vis -vis Daniel Sp uh, Sprong or Alexander Goulet. And then you get lucky and you get players that are drafted in later rounds and, and I'm all for the underdog. but. You're putting your franchise on the line when you're selecting your first uh, few picks in the in the first round, and it's uh, it's really really important. And I can't commend uh, and compliment our staff enough for the hard work that they put in. That's the agent for Beck. Getting back. Said that there's been some cold feet. Like I we got asked the question: Is he coming? We're not taking him at seven if he's not coming. We have an opportunity to draft a talented player like a Guillaume Beck and they're not 100% committed. What does that do for you? Do you still go with that player or does that really change the game? You know, there's a lot of politicking goes on in our draft. I mean, you've got kids from Quebec, it becomes complicated. You've got the CGEP issues. Most of Quebec kids would prefer, especially if they're French speaking, prefer to stay in Quebec. It's, um, but from a general standpoint to answer your question, I'm all about kids that really want to be here. So you get a sense that this kid will, is happy to come and play because we select this kid. We're we're selecting because he's making our. He's ready to play next year. Yeah. Beck is ready to play next year. He's big. He's strong. He's ready to play. Um, there was certainly some. There were some uh, guards and red flags about whether or not uh, Beck was wanting to come to an English speaking team and away from Quebec. So. It all factors in. There's no question. I think you're going to get more out of your players if they really want to be here than if it's a challenge to get them here and keep them here. Anyway, listen, I'm not. You guys know how I operate. You guys, you guys know the players better than me. We we go through the process because because we have to. The question is not really complicated for me. Are we comfortable to pick one of those eight guys on top of our list at number seven? Well, the answer, answer is yes. Yeah, yeah. The only the only one that we have to really think about because from a from a sh from a long range forecast standpoint is Fitzpatrick. Mm -hmm. Yeah. If Fitzpatrick slides, because the minute we draft him, we have completely lost. Broussard. We'll have to move Broussard. Yeah, yeah, I agree with that 100%. Because I got to meet with Broussard today to show him some love, to let him know that we we have a plan for him, that he's going to play. Because he sees Mason McDonald now as the second coming of Christ, as he should. We are, we're all excited about Mason, right? Yeah. So 
he sees himself as a backup and no no window to get out of that. Well, I mean, I, I like having two good goaltenders instead of one good one and one I don't know. Mason McDonald is clearly our number one goaltender. The role of being a backup, um, I'll give you the scenario, most people know the scenario, like Montreal Canadiens have Carey Price, he's clearly their number one. Tarkarski comes in after Price gets injured and he gets to play over Budai. I don't think there's any question Budai plays the role of a backup much, much better than Tarkarski will because Tarkarski probably believes he's a starting goaltender. Eric Broussard believed he's a starting goaltender and I think he's capable of being a starting goaltender. It wasn't going to be with us. If you think like this, you will never be a pro. Well, and that's what that, that's essentially what I've told the agent, and we're going to have to tell the kid again. Yeah. Because we put it on him in the exit meetings. We asked him. Connor was there. We asked him, "Do you want to do you want to be back here next year?" And he said yes. Now, can't blame the kid. He wants to play more. That's what you want. You want them to be competitive. And for me, we need someone to push Mason McDonald. As much as we love Mason, yeah. yeah. He's he's a '96 born, and he's not he's not Carey Price yet. No. I mean, let's just hold our horses here. Yeah. We're all excited about the potential, but he's not. We haven't won a Memorial Cup just yet. To move Broussard and get a third round pick, we paid a fifth for him. I thought it was good return on our investment, and it helped us go out and get a young goaltender who's two years younger than Mason that we feel we can grow into a starting goaltender. Now, if Lucas House comes in and challenges Mason, it either means Mason's not living up to his expectations, or Lucas House is way better than we thought. I'll deal with that scenario much easier than Broussard feeling he should be in the net every night. And that's, it's a difficult thing to hold a kid back, and it's really difficult to keep a kid happy that believes he's a number one. And I think Eric Broussard's good enough to be a starting goaltender in this league. Just not with us, because we our faith is in Mason. He's proven he can win. You can't, you can't judge his record based on the team he had in front of him last year, we all know that, but clearly in Finland, <laughs> he was the guy. Mm -hmm. He was good. Yeah. He was the talk of the tournament. Yeah. Really. Anybody watched the broadcast, you'd think that Craig Button and I were in bed together. <laughs> <laughs> they really, they really raved about him a lot on TV, which is great. Was there ever a moment in your mind that you thought Broussard might steal the number one job over Bebo or over Mason? Over Bebo or Mason. Sure. I mean, there was times he played six back-to-back -back games. You know, you come in and you're playing behind Antoine Bibeau, who his his body of work speaks for itself last year. I felt that, you know, there was a possibility we'd move uh, Bibeau and maybe Broussard would be our starting goaltender. But as it, as the season evolved, you see things that, uh, that you're excited about. You see the potential. But, again, I'll go back to moving Antoine Bibeau. It was always about acquiring Mason McDonald. Had we moved Antoine Bibeau and went with Eric Broussard, only fortune tellers could tell or crystal balls could tell what would have happened. But it was all about getting Mason McDonald. And we felt with Mason McDonald and Eric Broussard, we had two of the best goaltenders in the league, a real good one-two uh, combination. And as the season emerged, I think Mason clearly became our number one. And that was evident. But by the decision to run with him in the playoffs. The only thing can arrive at the draft if, if someone bring some of the guys before, we'll have to choose between two of those eight. Yeah, but again, my question is, are we prepared to go down this road? Because taking goaltenders high in the draft, I, I, I'm a little bit torn on it. In general, why don't you like to uh a goaltender high in the draft. You mentioned that in the war room. Yeah, it's just, uh, it's, so many things have to go right for goaltenders. I mean, Antoine Bibeau was a sixth round pick in this in this league, I believe. He was a sixth round pick in the National Hockey League. If you could do re redos or re uh, redrafts, you would do a lot of things differently. Goaltenders, they tend to take longer to mature, they tend to take longer to develop, and in junior hockey, it's a really short cycle but you need a quality goaltender. You know, it, it's, it's really difficult. It's hard to measure goaltending. It's hard to evaluate goaltending. We felt Evan Fitzpatrick was, was going to be a really, really good goaltender. Now I watched Evan Fitzpatrick give up eight goals one night. Yeah. You don't leave the building thinking he's the next Carey Price, but 
physically, uh, athletically, he's he looks like he's going to be a big time goaltender in our league and and leagues to come. So if 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 those five guys if those five guys are all gone and the goaltender's still there at eight or at seven rather, <clears throat> we're prepared to take this guy. The one topic that I have to bring up that I'm sure you're sick of talking about is Gatineau and Karabacic, that situation. Yeah, you know what? We were really excited about the prospects of, of getting Karabacic in the trade we made with Alexi Pepin. Um, the CHL rules didn't allow that trade to go the way the two teams wanted it. We felt we were in the right to get the player, regardless of the date of when he could be traded to us. Became very complicated, very emotional. Now, you've been around for a while in the hockey world. Have you gone through any situation like this before? No, but our league is, is synonymous with using uh, these future deals and uh, handshake deals, if you, were, if you will, uh, a deal between two GM. My words, your words, good enough. And, uh, but it, it, but it really became more complicated than that. I don't really want to get into the emotion side of it between Benoit and I. I can tell you it was incredibly heated. Um, we were prepared to uh, to honor the deal that we made, and uh, you know, two GMs' integrities were on the line here. At the end of the day, we found some common ground. Obviously, the, the stipulation, if you guys don't know, that what we did agree to uh, with Gatineau is, is that they will name the player that they were going to select at seven, and we've agreed not to select that player. It sounds like a little bit of a concession on our part, but think about it this way. If we're sitting there and we have 12 and we're wanting the player that we want, and they select him at seven, he's gone anyway, right? So. They still run the risk of losing that player with picks 8, 9, 10, and 11, which belong to two teams. You know, uh, Ryan Aranda has 8, 9, and uh, Victor nope. has, or the other way. Yeah. Yeah. Victor has 8, 9, and Ryan Aranda has 10 and 11. So, you know, I guess if, if there's any solace in it, and I hope the player that they name is gone with 8, 9, 10, or 11. <laughs> that, that talking out loud too much? We wanted compensation for the fact that we weren't getting Karabacek. We were asking for the fourth overall pick, which, which was our original pick uh, for Cameron Kiley. And uh, they, didn't, they wouldn't go that far. We came to common ground at seven. So to move from 12 to seven, regardless if it was us and Gatineau, just in general terms, would cost, you know, based on pressing a first and a second round or a first round pick and a player. A month ago, six weeks ago, made a commitment for, there, there's some, we're not the only team involved in controversy. There was a commitment made for Balmas, and our understanding is, is that they backed out of that commitment, thinking they might get him at 13, which is naive, based on our list. He doesn't never slide, Balmas never slides to 13. Well, they probably believe in that because they have two Quebec team in the middle of the, you know, a pick from 8 to 11, that's yeah. Quebec team, and they believe that nobody will pick him, but I really know that Victor will pick him if he's still there. And they also and that, didn't know that we were moving the 7 when they did that. Yeah, exactly, and I, and I, also, uh, and I also believe that uh, Balmas would probably be the name that he will put on, on us. Because I, I think he doesn't believe that Vito will pick him, mm -hmm. and he will try to move him to batters, you know, at number twelve, and go get some other pick. Obviously, the magnitude of this pick is great. It's your first pick. Doesn't matter if it's twelve, seven, <coughs> nineteen. It doesn't matter. We're 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 living testament of how important it is. Because look what we got last year with Sprong at thirteen and Goulet at nineteen. Balmas will absolutely come to us, and will be extremely happy to play for us.
What was the feeling at the Islanders table right before the first pick? We were really excited about uh, about the two or three players that we knew we were going to get. Um, we felt it was a four-player draft. The, the four players that went we thought would be gone. So when we were able to move from 12 to 7, we knew that the excitement level would be would be high because the players are going to be there that we want. So we weren't sure who uh, Cape Breton was going to take, and we certainly weren't sure who Bathurst were going to take. I did a little bit of fishing. Um, there wasn't enough separation for me to to offer something to move up. I guess to describe the feeling, we were excited. Seven overall, we knew we were getting a really, really good player. Yeah. You guys ready for the draft? Are you ready for the draft? You know it. <laughs> <laughs> well, there's Coach Gordy Dyer. How you doing, Gordy? What's going on? How we doing today, hockey hat guy? That's right. No, 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 no. <laughs> How are things, Jake? Pretty good, pretty good, pretty good. He's looking yeah. dapper. Ah, uh, well, we try. <laughs> Getting all dressed up for the big day, so it's pretty exciting. You ready for the draft? Yeah. All right, great. Yeah. Lots of fun. Okay. How you doing? Good. Yeah? You excited to be back in the draft? Yeah, sure. Yeah? <laughs> What's your name? Edward. Edward, okay. Now, are you in charge of this place? Like, are you the GM now, or? Every one day. One day, eh? <laughs> all right. How you doing, Spider? Hey, Jake. Hey. What's going on, B.I.? Well, how many drafts has this been for you? This will be number 12, I believe. Woo. Hey, What's up? Mr. Cortez. How's how are you going? doing, sir? Good yourself. Pretty good. You're doing a lot of documentary on it. Oh, yeah, you better believe it, man. So what was it like here when you were drafted? In it was different. Very different, right? Eh? Yeah. I mean, we had, like, uh, the first round was on the floor. Nice setup, though. But this is like the big chat. Yeah, it's nice, eh? Yeah. Good stuff, yeah. This is a trip, man. This is yeah, a trip. it's real nice. Gilles Courteau, Commissioner of the Quebec Major Junior Hockey League, guesting with us right now. Gilles, of course, every franchise in the queue right now gets a chance to refresh here with the draft. Uh, but this draft, a little bit special compared to the other major junior uh, leagues here in Canada, you hold it somewhat similar to the National Hockey League. Exactly, uh, because uh, for us, it's uh, a way to show to our players, uh, you know, the way that we want to welcome them in the Quebec Major Junior Hockey League. It, it is important uh, for us to give them that uh, that window, that opportunity, and uh, say, hey, uh, when you make a decision to come and play in the Quebec Major Junior Hockey League, what you see on a draft day is what you'll get throughout your junior career. With first selection, St. John's from Newbridge Academy, Evan Fitzpatrick. are proud to select the Albatros du Collège Notre Dame, Pierre Luc Dubois. Titans are proud to select from Central Ice Pack, Jordan Mayer. I mean, we all have to be on the same page in terms of development. We have to be on the same page in terms of short-term goals, long-term goals. With some of these moves that uh, we're planning on making, it allows us to, you know, get through the draft, draft the players we want, but also have a long-range uh, plan in place. But at the end of the day, uh, Gilles Tremblay has the pen. 
He's the head scout. He knows these players better than anybody. He studies the players and he studies the reports. I guess the way to say it is he has the pen and I put the ink in the pen. I guess I may have the final say, but I give a lot of latitude and a lot of uh, a lot of authority to Jill Strombley because I have a great deal of faith in Jill. So yeah, we listen. We we cipher through the information and uh, we make our decisions as best we uh, we deem fit in terms of the information and. So far, so good. This is Jill's second draft. It's my second draft, and we're pretty happy with the with the acquisition so far. And we'll see what the the draft picks uh, what what kind of a yield we get uh, come training camp. Elite player in his age group, I had an opportunity to see him at all different levels, uh, played as an underage in the under-17s, uh, played at the Combine with two really, really quality players, played on a not a very competitive team uh, in Sydney, so therefore a lot of nights you go to see him play as teams getting pummeled by much stronger opponents, but uh, through all the work that we did, uh, really excited about getting a high-end center iceman that plays hard, has got skill has uh, really good skating uh, assets and really, really smart hockey players, so we're excited about getting them. GM Grant Sonier with us here in Sherbrooke. You just made the seventh selection of the Quebec Major Junior Hockey League Draft 2014. You stayed pretty close to home uh, from, uh, when you take a look at from one island to the other, uh, a kid uh, from, from Cape Breton. Yeah, we couldn't be more happy to have Mitchell Bombas join our organization. Realistically, nothing's taken for granted here, Grant, but the expectation, breaking training camp, where do you see him fitting into your roster right up here? I think he's going to surprise people. I'm not one for guessing and, uh, and to making predictions. Uh, he's going to he's going to make our hockey club. That's, that's the one prediction I will make. Uh, we have room for good players, and uh, this kid's going to come in and impress a lot of people. Congratulations on a great pick. Thank you very much. Eat all the reps, the bower reps, I'll take Mitchell and get him fitted for skate. Okay. All that stuff like that. Alright, can I come along yeah, and see yeah. Awesome, okay.
Here we are back at the draft. The Islanders' number two pick in the second round, Samuel Gilbol. Samuel Gilbol is uh, is a left winger that we're really excited about getting. He's uh, he's a kid that plays the game the right way, in my opinion. Um, if I had to describe him. He's a little bit like an Alexander Goulet in that he plays both sides of the puck very well, uh, committed to, to defense, but wants to play offense. We think we got ourselves a really, really good player in the second round. Islanders second pick in the second round, 34th overall in the Quebec Major Junior Hockey League, and that is Andrew Smith, who comes from the Montreal area, played AAA here in Quebec. Well, size is obvious. He's six, six and a half, and uh, if he grows into his body, he's uh, he's pretty lean right now. But uh, great range of motion, really, uh, really good skater for his size. Coordination for kids at, at that age, at that size, usually isn't anywhere near the level it is with this kid. So, we see uh, a Diaby type player uh, that played in Victoriaville. Big, rangy, plays with grit. Uh, could have a could have a real long career in hockey if everything all falls into place. Islanders fourth pick of the draft, 48th overall, Keith Getson, who comes from Nova Scotia. Now, of course, you had a bit of a not family connection here, but a pretty friendly connection with the Islanders first overall pick, seventh overall in this draft. Yeah, he's a great friend. I've played with him for a long time now. I can't wait to start playing with him. Keith Getson's a kid that uh, has all the pedigree and kind of slipped in a lot of in a lot of rankings. Maybe similar to Balmas and that the environment uh, didn't show what he could do every night playing midget hockey. Uh, that was addressed. We think that uh, we think he's one of the steals in the draft. We think his elite uh, work ethic and skill uh, could really bode well for him in this league. Uh, a player good enough that on given nights probably felt uh, unmotivated but going to have to be motivated to play here. If he comes motivated and physically ready in terms of conditioning, I think he could be a big surprise. What are your thoughts on the job Sherbert did at the draft? They did an impeccable job. They were great. They were great hosts. The city was great. They had lots of uh, Lots of interaction with the city, lots of interaction with the fans. I thought the the arena dress up was incredible. I thought it looked every bit as good as the National Hockey League draft, in my opinion. They had the ability with the with the video setup that they have in their room. They had lots of social events. Uh, they did a really really good job, and I know we're going to be hosting the draft in two years' time. I I hope we've taken some good notes because they did an excellent job. And finally, what is the one thing you'll take away or always remember from this year's draft? Probably, unfortunately, it was marred by the Gatineau situation that consumed a lot of my time, uh, a lot of other people's time. But, uh, you know, being a guy half full versus half empty glass, I'll remember the expressions on the faces. I'll remember the great hosts of Sherbrooke. And I'll remember what a bang up job our, our booth did, the people like yourself and all the people that were up there receiving people. And I guess if there was one touching moment was when I went up into the stands after we picked Mitchell Balmas, I went over to see the agents and start the process right away about uh, contracts. The family was sitting right behind and the, the dad shook my hand and started to cry and told me that I made him the happiest father on the planet. So. That's the, that's the one little touching moment that I'll probably remember. But the smiles on the kids' faces and, uh, and I guess the, the greenness of it all because the kids are all excited. They all think they're going to play. They're not all going to play. But if, if we're ahead of the learning curve and we can get four or five of them to play, it'll be a, a real good yield for us.